My brothers and sisters, welcome to Prospect AME Church. Thank you for worshiping with us. We're excited about all that God has for us in this season of Lent. Let us remember that our sacrifice truly is seen and heard by the Lord. I want everybody to please remember that it is important for us to do the duty of keeping each other safe. Let us wear our masks. Let us make sure that we make an effort to be vaccinated. Do not allow fear to overwhelm us. It is important, my brothers and sisters, in our survival. Also, let us pray for those who may not be able to pray for themselves, even in times of great difficulty, even if we do not know who these individuals are. In this time of great violence in our country, let us pray for those victims that have fallen before us. The blessings of God be with you. We thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.
opportunity, Lord, to come to you and to express our love for your presence in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for letting us have a mind to seek you hour by hour. Even as we rise every morning, Lord, thank you for allowing us to go from space to space in our right mind with the use of our hands and our feet. Lord, we thank you for good health. We even thank you, Lord, for allowing us to experience difficulties and to find valley moments so that we will know what mountaintop experiences truly mean. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a measure of prosperity, for being our breakthrough, for opening doors and windows for us, Lord, and not allowing there to be enough room to receive that which you have given us. We are grateful to you, Lord, for just thinking of us in every aspect of our existence. Even when we are in the midst of our sin, dear God, thank you for staying with us and sticking with us and encouraging us until we are elevated out of our place of despair. Have mercy on us, Lord, that we will be able to see the plight of our brothers and sisters, to know that if one hurts, that we all hurt, understanding that there is no respect of person, regardless of our ethnicity, regardless of our station in life. Regardless of our wealth, dear God, have mercy on us so that we would not be blind to the plight of our brothers and sisters. Show us, dear Lord, how to hold on and to hold out long enough to do the work that you have us to do as servants. Lord, right now we pray for the sick, for those who are still suffering. Lord, we pray for the mindset that will allow us to be able to accept the blessings that you send our way. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. Show us that knowledge is truly power. Help us to know, dear God, that receiving a vaccine should not be in conflict with our faith. Show us, Master, how to spread truth instead of falsehood. And Lord, even for those who have lost loved ones, we pray that you will give them peace so that they will be able, Lord, to move forward, so that they'll be able to sleep at night and be able to continue in the work that you have for us to do. Bless our children, Lord, and bless them in such a way that they will be better servants than we are. Show us, God, that there is a way out of no way, and if we hold on, that we will truly be shown that light. Lord, when we've done everything that we can do, we pray for a place in your kingdom. It does not matter where. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Matthew 26. Matthew 26. And we'll start with the 57th verse. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where he teaches the religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it would end. Inside, the leading priests and the entire high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward who declared, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Summary of the Decalogue. Hear what Christ our Savior said. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments depend on all the laws and the prophets. The glory of Padre. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen, amen, and amen. You say that you are my sheep. Why are you following me?
just a beautiful day, isn't it? I'll tell you a little, little, it doesn't feel good sometimes when someone gives you a compliment. And you, you may be in one of those moods where it's just a whole long day. But the minute somebody gives you a compliment, you, you just brighten up. Everything just comes to life. The next thing you know, you're laughing and talking and having a good time with everybody. But I know I was at work and my day was a whole home. I was having a good day. But that, that little compliment that someone gave me, it really brightened me up a little bit more. And I work in an area where I have to keep my area clean and neat and straightened and everything. And they told me that area over there looks really good. When I come in to other stores, I see stuff was just thrown around. But today I came in and saw this area and it was beautiful. And that was the beauty area. I said, well, that's my area. She said, well, you know what? It looks good. And that just brightened up my day even more. That's just a little kitty. I just want to throw that out there. Scripture this morning, the everlasting God is your place of safety. His arms will hold you forever. Deuteronomy 33, 27. And my subject this morning will is, I will take care of you. And Jesus is speaking to us this morning, and he says, says to us, trust me with all your heart. When you get out of bed, trust me. When you go to school, trust me. When you're with your friends, trust me. And when you go to bed every night, trust me. Trust me at all times in every situation. I will take care of you. I already have your life planned. With everything, when everything around you seems to be going wrong and you're just tired of trying, when you feel like your life is spinning and it seems like there's troubles on every hand, troubles on every corner, and you just don't know what to do, and you try and you just decide, I'm gonna give up. I want you to whisper these words. Say it with me. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. When you say this, stop trying to fix everything yourself because you know we do it. And you trust the plan that Jesus has for you. Let me take care of you. That's what Jesus is telling you this morning. Let me take care of you. Fall back into the safety of his powerful arms. I promise he'll catch you when you stumble and fall. You know, in the book of Jeremiah, God, God compares people with, to two branches. One is a dry, brittle branch, all shriveled up and dying. And there's another branch that's alive with green plants, beautiful flowers. A person who only trusts other people to help him and give him support is like a branch that's dry and brittle. He won't see the good things in life. They, they always want more and more and more. And they will always worry about every little thing. But a person who trusts in God, who believes God will help him or her, will be there, will be like the branch that's full of life. Flowers bloom. Life, you feel you're free, you're easy going. They will receive many, many blessings from God. They will not be worried or afraid of, of anything because they know that God, is, they can trust God, trust Jesus in everything. And God will take care of you no matter what. Grow up, be strong, and know that God is with you, helping you through life. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we want to just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for our life. Lord, we thank you in advance for our change in our lives. Lord, we are so glad that you are helping us to grow strong like a healthy branch, full of life, full of with flowers blooming. Help us learn how to trust you and, and knowing that you are there with us in every situation, every struggle, disappointments, and other things. Things we go through that we cannot handle. Lord, we thank you 
Thank you for helping us realize we cannot handle them on ourselves. The Bible tells us that you know our hearts and our minds. Lord, we want you to see that we have a good heart. We have a heart seeking you. And our minds are constantly staying on you. In the name of Jesus, amen. And I'm going to leave you with two scriptures. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lay not depend on your own understanding. Remember the Lord in everything you do, and he will give you success. Jeremiah 29, 13, 14, You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found. Have a good day. The day is yours. <laughs>
those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance, right up to the courtyard of the high priest. He entered and sat down with the guards to see the outcome. The chief priests of the Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they didn't find anything, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward and declared, this fellow said that, that he could rebuild the temple if it was destroyed and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, are you going to answer? What is this testimony that these men have brought against you? But Jesus remained silent. Word of God for the people of God. And we all say thanks be unto God. My brothers and sisters, we choose as a topic of reference on this morning the importance of knowing our temple. The importance of knowing our temple. In times of di distress and difficulty, my brothers and sisters, it is really easy for someone else to control our story. In other words, it's easy for somebody to control our narrative, even if they're not telling the truth. It's very, very easy for us to be undermining our confidence to fail us if we are not confident in who we are. We have to know where we stand firmly. We have to know that our foundation is sure. And we have to be confident enough that even when folks from the outside say to us that we are not worthy, that we cannot make it, that we are something other, that we stand and we look squarely into the eyes of evil and say, no, I, I know who I am, I know where I came from, and I know my purpose. It is important to know this, especially in the dark times that we are in right now. There is so much evil in the land that we can point to, my brothers and sisters, but I dare say that this is no different from any other battlefield that we have encountered. It's important to also recognize that in the heat of battle, in order to be able to shout, in order to be able to claim victory, we have to know that victory belongs to us. Not because of the position that we hold, not because of a title, but because of who we belong to. Being children of God, being heirs to the throne, being saved by the blood of the Lamb entitles us to stand firm and confidently say that in spite of what is in front of me, I am not defined by my circumstance. Somebody who is watching at this moment should look in the mirror and even say that we are not defined by that which surrounds us. We are not defined by our poverty. We are not defined by our brokenness. We are not even defined by our sins or our past deeds. But rather, we are defined by what God says about us, that we are truly wondrously made. And my brothers and sisters, if we need any evidence to explore that whether Jesus really is who he say he is. Just think and take an inventory of where we've been, we've been, and what we've done. And look at the outcome at the end of every day. It would have to be God to be able to allow us to enjoy that which we have in front of us. Because knowing ourselves, there is nothing good in us except that the Lord has actually put it there. It is important to know who we are so that no one else can paint a picture that would say that we are something else. In a nation that is defined by its claim to its importance of, of diversity, let me put that a different way. In a country that claims that it loves everyone and that everyone matters and that everybody should, should have a space and that everyone contributes, at this moment, my brothers and sisters, I'm afraid that the the situation says something different. In this moment in time, in this space, I'm afraid that that which we boast, my brothers and sisters, it truly, it truly is not what we see. 
I want everybody to think about the fact that we come from a long line of oppression. We come from places that are too difficult sometimes to even conjure in our memory. But it is the fact that we know who we are that gives us strength, that gives us that, that pillar that allows us to hold on. When we know that calling on the name of Jesus makes a difference, my brothers and sisters, it is that which causes us to rise out of the ashes. I want you to take a look at Jesus as he had been captured and brought before those who would persecute him even further by those that would pass judgment on him and, and those who would determine the fate of his sentence. Jesus had been brought from the garden into the space of the high priest. And there were those that were looking to find something that they could use against him. Not even truth, my brothers and sisters. Does that sound familiar? It, it, it was the falsehoods that they conjured up, that they threw before the, the council, but it still didn't stick. But finally, somebody was able to dig up something. You know, maybe, maybe if they were in today's arena, they would be looking through his social media files. Maybe they, he would, they would be looking at his Instagram or his Twitter feed or, or whatever, and, and they would come up with the fact that Jesus said that if he's given three days, if the temple is destroyed in three days, it shall be rebuilt. Now, my brothers and sisters, because our enemies often do not know who we are or what we are made of, the same mistake was made then that is made now. Some of them thought that Jesus was actually talking about a building. But the truth of the matter is, Jesus was saying that if you destroy me, if you destroy the vessel, if you destroy this temple that is made of flesh and blood, then guess what? It's all right because in three days it will be rebuilt. My brothers and sisters, one of the greatest weapons that the Lord God has given us is the ability to understand the power that we hold in the temple in the, the, the vessel that he has given us, that which holds our actual spirit. There is no reason to despair when we know that what is on the inside is what counts and not what folks see on the outside. The council thought that they had Jesus, actually. And so it was when someone said to, to Jesus, what do you say about this that, that has been brought against you? Jesus said nothing. My brothers and sisters, it is not a, a show of weakness not to participate in a lie or the lie. It is important to us to recognize that every once in a while, the show of strength is actually in our silence. When we are able to stand and be able not to be moved and, and be able to say and look into the face of obstacles and opposition, we can make it, my brothers and sisters, if we just continue to know who we are. The challenge for us today is that many of us are not willing to speak up and speak out in that manner. First thing I want you to think about, my brothers and sisters, is that there will always be somebody that will want to tell us that we are something other than who we really are. There will always be somebody that will want to, to, to paint a picture that does not look like us. The importance of telling our own story, the importance of telling uh, others where the Lord has brought us from, our testimony, if you will, is that it can never be debated if we tell it. Nobody can tell our story like we can. If we believe truly in what we boast, if we truly believe that God will make a way, if we truly believe that God makes a way out of no way, if we truly believe that he is our lily of the valley, our wheel in the middle of the wheel, whatever adjective you want to use to describe what Jesus is in our lives, if we believe that, my brothers and sisters, then we have no problem standing up against any enemy. It is important to know our own temple. As we look out over the expanse of life right now, as we try to figure out how is it that we endure in such hard times, it is very important that we know that our enemies often use that which we think is off limits to define us. It is 
often the enemy that outsmarts us because we give too much credence to just looking the other way. It is important, my brothers and sisters, to know our enemies as well as we know ourselves. And when we know our enemy as well as we know ourselves, we are able to fight the good fight. I know that I can stand because of Jesus. I know that I can stand because truth will always out, outsmart the falsehood. I know that we will rise up out of the ashes. Why? Because Jesus has got our back. These are all the things that we must tell ourselves every day. Stand in front of the mirror. Make it personal. Say to yourself, I can get up and I can face Monday morning, not because of what's in my pocket, not because of what surrounds me, but because I know who I am. And in translation, that simply means that I know my temple. My brothers and sisters, do we know our temple? Even in the 21st century, even as we are facing a pandemic that seems to be relentless, even as we face social injustice, even as we, we, we face the assassination of people simply because of the way that they look, do, do we really know the importance of understanding and knowing our own temple? The second thing I think we need to realize, my brothers and sisters, is that there should be no confusion. There should be no confusion concerning what the temple and what the temple represents really is to us. It is always a good idea to keep the enemy guessing. And this was the downfall of those who came against Jesus because instead of them understanding that he was speaking of his own situation, that he was speaking of himself, they confused the destruction of the temple with a building made out of wood and bricks and water. But my brothers and sisters, it is not the physical that we should strive to protect, but it is our spirit, it is our very soul that we should, we should work so hard to protect against the elements of evil. In other words, my friends, it is, it is imperative that we give up all of those things that the enemy that we face thinks is dear to us. Let them take the money. Let them take the house. Let them take the car. Let them take the clothes, whatever it is. Let them take the power. Let them strip us of our titles. But my brothers and sisters, as long as we know Jesus, as long as we are steadfast in our faith, God will do what? Make a way. The importance of knowing our temple means that the enemy will be distracted and go after the wrong thing. Oh, you can even break my body. You can take that and destroy it. You can bury it in the ground. But it is the spirit of God that lives within us that gives us the power over the dark forces of evil. Some folks get it all twisted. They think that, well, if we threaten their lives, if we inflict terrorism throughout the land if we, we hang ropes from trees and make people fearful to go outside of their houses, if we even go into businesses and, and, and take the lives of individuals just because of the way they look, if we do all of those things, then that will oppress them to the point that they will give up the fight. But my, my, my brothers and sisters, that's not the way God operates. He has given us the assurance, even if our bodies are broken, even if our bank accounts are empty, there is still a place in the kingdom for us. Our story does not end with this earthly situation. This earthly vessel can fade away, but the word of God will live forever. If anybody believes that, then find our strength in the promise of God. It is important, my brothers and sisters, that we know and understand our temple. The last thing I want to share with you, my brothers and my sisters, is this, that regardless of what the battlefield looks like, regardless of how hot the fire becomes, we don't always have to participate in the brokenness that the evil forces put before us. In other words, we don't have to get into a big argument with everybody in order to stand our ground. Watch Jesus as he is before the Sanhedrin council and they confront him and they say, what is it that you have to say about these allegations that come against you? My brothers and sisters, Jesus said nothing. 
But that was not a show of weakness. It was actually a show of strength. If we believe in who we are, if we know who we are, it does not matter what people say. It does not matter what they put out. It does not matter what is on social media. We can get up and say, I am confident that we will be victorious in the battle because our battle is fought on the, on the side of right. The problem with evil, my brothers and sisters, is that it will always be on the wrong side of the fence. There will be some folks that think that they can straddle. On one day, they will say and profess that they are doing the will of God. But then when you look at the actions, then we see that they are actually doing the work of the enemy. There is no right way to do wrong and no wrong way to do right. We cannot oppress people. We cannot destroy their lives and their livelihoods and then say that it is in the, the will of God. We cannot get up and pray and, and put up all kinds of, of, of falsehoods in front of America and say that what we are doing is because we love the Lord. No, my brothers and sisters, it will come to light. We do not have to fight with our mouths and with our tongues every day in order to defeat the enemy. Stand tall and let those know who come against us that though you may destroy my body, though you may take away my possessions, maybe even take away my, my, my right to citizenship in this land, it does not matter because I know who I am. We know who we are and we understand the importance of knowing our temple. My brothers and sisters, as we look at uncertain days and we wonder how we've come so far and every time we take one step forward, it seems that Three steps are taken away from us. Even in the 21st century, as we find ourselves being confronted once again with the suppression of our vote, with the denial of that which everyone else has, with, with folks taking away even the right to good health, my brothers and sisters, let us know our temple. Let us know our refuge. Let us know our place of prayer. Let us know our power base. For even in the valley moment, Jesus is there. Even in our brokenness, Christ is with us. And at the end of every battle, we will be victorious in the war. For one day, Jesus will come back for us. And we will be among the number that will be first, and those who were first will be last. If there's somebody out there that believes that on this day, if you feel in your spirit that God is calling you into an awareness of your temple, if you believe that the Lord has something bigger for us than just what we see on this side of the Jordan, this is your opportunity. Won't you come? The doors of the church are open. As we understand the importance of our temple, let your prayer be that the Lord will bring you in to a space where you can know him better. Won't you come? This is the invitation to Christian discipleship. The blessings of God are at our feet. Won't you come? Let us pray together. Lord Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to even call your name. Be with us as we travel in our understanding of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As we wake up to face another week, my brothers and sisters, let us be aware of the goodness of God. In this holiest of seasons, let us make sure that we take the time to embrace our Lord. The blessings of God be with you. Have a wonderful week. Love is